of Africa, we go to Ghana, where the seeming delay in revising the Ghana Investment Promotion Centre, GIPC law, is to ensure that any revision made does not place the country at a losing end, especially as the continent prepares for the biggest trading bloc in the world, says CEO of the centre, Yofi Grant. Concerns have been expressed by both foreign and local investors, as well as traders, on some aspects of the GIPC Act 2013, saying some provisions in the law make the investment climate in the country unhealthy. Joining us live is Kwesi Amposa Boateng to make sense of all of this. Good to have you, Mr. Boateng. Good morning. Uh, nice to hear you. Good to have you here as always. Now, Ghana Investment Promotion Center uh, Law, which is the Act of 865, has set conditions for investment and other economic activities of immigrants in the country. What's the core, uh, the core area of contention here that the headlines might be missing? Help us make sense of it. Uh, the core area is the participation of foreign nationals in retail. And uh, I think, uh, I mean, again, let's not beat about the bush. Ghana and Nigeria have had trade relations for centuries. And now the new law is trying to provide some level of protection for Ghanaian retailers. And it's caused a lot of anxiety. What we have to appreciate is that change is difficult and different people are affected in different ways. The bottom line is, Ghanaians actually need a level of protection for foreigners in terms of the retail trade. That's the real crux of the issue. And it's how that is implemented. And sometimes I believe some trade associations approach this in quite a draconian way. And it needs to actually be implemented sensibly. That's all. We lost almost the last bit of what you said. But how far does this foreign retailer's uh, dynamics go? Well, the dynamics are twofold. I mean, Nigeria is a big trading partner. Uh, the Nigeria economy is far bigger than Ghana. Hmm. Uh, Nigeria retail traders, uh, retail activities in Ghana are regulated by this law. Uh, there is a way that I think perception needs to also be admitted into this whole discussion. There's a long history of Ghanaians considering our big friendly giant next door as a retail threat. Hmm. There's also issues around the, the, the whole process of how each party benefits. I mean, I'll give you an example. Access to capital. There are big Nigerian banks in Ghana that really have helped access to capital in Ghana. But the retail trade, for instance, is at a very small scale. It's not as big as one would imagine. And it is nothing to compare with the volumes that Nigerians do in their own country. So effectively, it's a combination of expectation, anxiety, mm -hmm. and for want of a better word, regulation. I think if that is adhered to, and practiced, we can coexist quite peacefully. And the, the whole objective is to actually trade with each other. Mm. And at the retail level, the competition is fierce as far as Ghanaians are concerned. All right. I mean, I hear the bit of anxiety there that you mentioned. I just want to also check that could this be a similar dynamics left unchecked that may have resulted in the so-called xenophobic wars that we've seen in South Africa, you know, over the years? I mean, people mention it all the time. I think uh, it's nothing to compare to that. Uh, first of all, our links with Nigeria are quite different from the dynamics that occurred in South Africa. I, I, I would like to take the steam out of it so that mm -hmm. we don't jump quickly to the fact that we are expelling each other. Because we've done this in the past. I mean, I don't know whether your history serves you well. We've had situations where Ghanaians in the 70s felt that there was something not too legal about nationals from other countries that existed in Ghana and were engaged in business. Yeah, it was called the Aliens Compliance Order. And the bulk of the people who were impacted by this were Nigerian traders. Subsequently, in the 80s, Nigerians also had an act that also propelled Ghanaians back 
because the economic fortunes of Ghana in the 80s too were so low that a lot of Ghanaians were in Nigeria conducting business. Mm. So the South African uh, comparison is not an appropriate one. What I'd like to give as an example is just the dynamic of actually promoting free trade. The legislation is being developed. It's a work in progress. And change is difficult. Hmm. My vision is that eventually we have a bigger trading block whereby our goods and services flow much better and retail is better regulated than it is at the moment. All right. I mean, I hear you trying to make that clarity there, but do you see this matter being handled and harmonized in such a way that foreign retailers versus local content, you know, uh, will thrive? And on top of that, I would just want to find out what would be your recommended way forward in all of this? I, I, I believe that it's to do with leadership and Ghana and Nigeria's leadership have very cordial relations. Sit down, map it out so that the regulations and its enforcement requires good leadership. It gives us almost like a framework to operate. Without frameworks, you get chaos. And I, I must say, this is one thing that maybe we as Africans and even more closer in terms of West Africans, have incredible laws, but it's the implementation of the laws and the interpretation of the laws. I mean, a simple example in terms of a way forward would be dialogue. A lot of people in terms of trade associations are implementing rules that don't exist in Ghanaian law because of anxiety. On the other side too, a lot of people who are resident in Ghana really disabuse themselves of how they treat visitors. You know, there's this incredible uh, saying that Ghanaians constantly are very hospitable and things like, we, 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 we give more attention to the stranger. But when the stranger is your big friendly giant, there's a lot of fear. And the fear is unfounded. My, my recommendation is dialogue, implement and adhere to the law, and then finally, see it as a way forward for better relations, both right. economically and our even social interaction. We, we, are, we, we have more together than we being apart. Okay. I mean, the world is trying very hard to actually improve the economic sort of environment in everybody's little corner. Mm. I don't think we can do it alone, but we will be better collaborating with each other. So my, my recommendation is implement the law, socialize it, let people understand that we are better together. That's right. my conclusion about this. And, and that's a good way to wrap it, Mr. Boateng. Thank you so very much and for highlighting how crucial dialogue is at this point. Do keep safe out there.